Hello. My name is Liz Tevlin. I am a registered nurse working at Street Health, a community-based organization that works with homeless and underhoused communities in the downtown core of Toronto. The homeless and underhoused communities have been extremely hard hit by this pandemic. The messaging has consistently been stay at home, but how do you socially distance if you don't have a home? How do you wash your hands if you don't have access to a washroom? How do you get a mask and how do you keep it clean? But beyond that, how do you even get reliable information about what is going on and what you need to do to stay safe? Most of our clients don't have access to phones or computers, especially since the library is closed. So information is largely found by word of mouth. These communities have extremely high rates of chronic health issues that put them at great risk for complications from COVID. They are the ones who will likely get very sick. They are the ones at risk of dying. And the governments are not providing adequate support. The different levels of government have provided some help, but it has consistently been too little, too late. And now that the city is opening up again, I am very afraid that these communities will be forgotten as everyone else moves on. Before the pandemic hit, we were already experiencing an opioid overdose crisis, as well as a homelessness crisis in Toronto. COVID has worsened both of these crises and brought along many new problems. There's been a major reduction in services that work with homeless and underhoused communities, such as health care, harm reduction, food programs, case management, and overdose prevention sites. This has led to increases in physical and mental health issues, isolation, severe malnourishment, overdoses, and extreme levels of stress. It has become even more difficult than usual to access shelter beds. I've called with several clients and been unable to secure beds, so those clients have had to sleep outside instead. Specialty beds are even harder to come by. I met with a longtime client this week who was in extreme distress and disclosed to me that she was indeed suicidal. I was unable to get her a mental health bed because of the reduction in programming. And she didn't feel safe going to a general shelter which is a common sentiment that has greatly escalated with COVID. Many homeless people feel more safe living in encampments and find a sense of community there. That is their home. Initially, the city put a moratorium on clearing the encampments, which was a great relief to hear. However, they have since begun clearing encampments again, destroying people's personal property and breaking up communities. They are doing this without having appropriate alternate housing options for these residents. They have nowhere else to go that is safe. They are simply being told to move along. We need your help. We need you to call and to write to your representatives to demand several things. First, immediately provide all homeless people with hotel rooms or housing and reinstate the moratorium on clearing encampments. Second, provide access to washrooms, showers, laundry, telephones, food, and service referrals at day shelters. This also provides temporary shelter from the elements, which is very important. Already this week, I met with a man suffering from heat exposure, and those cases will only increase as the summer comes. Next, increase COVID testing at homeless facilities and connect those facilities with healthcare workers to ensure effective and accurate screening. It's not as simple as whether you do or don't have a cough, do or don't have a fever. Finally, we need better funding for harm reduction services, such as overdose prevention sites and safer supply prescribing programs. And we need to make these services available at all hotels and isolation sites. Thank you for your time and thank you for helping to support some of our most vulnerable community members. We are all in this together. Thank you.